Arrays. Arrays is a great way for us to use our data types as a list. Let's say we wanted to make use of a number list. We can do that by specifying a type. I'm going to use uint, then square brackets and give it a name. I will call this my num array for short like this and then let's give it a value. In square brackets I'm going to say maybe 3, 2, 4 and 6. Now we can add many more unsigned integers in the unsigned integer array because it's also a dynamically sized array. We can specify the same array but this time say that it should only be able to take two elements. Let's give it a name of fixed num array and now we can specify a few numbers. Now let's say I add 1, 2 and 6. You can see that there would be an error and it's because this can only take two elements. So we'll have to remove one. And now we see it's fine. So this is our dynamically sized array here at the top and it can grow and shrink in size. For our fixed sized array it can shrink less than 2 but it can never be more than 2. Alright and that's because we specified the size. Now an array can be different types. Here we have a number array. For now I'm simply going to say this is my array and change the type to bool. This will mean that we now can only use true or false values in this array. Or we could have a string array and this could be our animals. And this could be equal to cat, dog and bird. We can even have multi-dimensional arrays. Here's an example of a two-dimensional array. It's an array of unsigned integers in an array of unsigned integers. So here we basically specify the array inside another array. Now let's take a step back and focus on a numbers array like this. It's an unsigned integer array, public, and these are the values. The most important thing about arrays that we need to know is that the list is zero indexed. Meaning that the value 2 behind the scenes is sitting on index 0, 7 is sitting on index 1, 200, 2 and 1, 3. It is important to understand because this is how we can get access to these values in the array. Let's create a function that we can call to get the value of an item in the array. I'm going to call it get item by index. We are going to have one parameter and that will be an unsigned integer and I'm going to call it index. We're going to make this public and this will be view. And then in the brackets we want to return the numbers, our array, and then in these brackets pass index, like so. So whatever we pass to this numbers array, we should get this returned. Let's just make sure that we are returning this. And we need to specify that this will return an unsigned integer. If we deploy this contract, we can see here is our function. And if we say we want the element at index 0, we get 2. And that's correct because that's the first element. If we specify 1, we should get the next element, which is 7. And 2 should be 200. So now you can see why 0 index is very important to understand. You also notice there's a numbers function over here. And this is essentially created for us because we made it public. Like variables, we can now also read it off here. What is index 0? It is number 2. So technically we didn't have to create this function, but I wanted to do it so you understand how it works. Instead what would be better is if we changed our function into instead of get number by index, because we already have that, we can just simply say get numbers not have any parameters and in the return return a uint array and in the function itself we need to return the entire array. Now this will show us an error and that's because we need to specify that the array we're going to return is going to make use of memory. We talked about memory and storage and call data before. This is going to use memory. Now we can deploy the contract, we can open it and when we get numbers we see the entire array, 2, 7, 200 and 1. Now with arrays we can do special things, like add elements to arrays and remove them from the end of the array. I've added these two functions. The first one 
says push to numbers and it takes in a number to add. Here we get the numbers array and we say dot push and in these brackets we specify what element, in this case our number, we want to add to the end of the array. Alternatively, we can also remove the last element of an array. Here I have a function and I called it pop from numbers and it doesn't take any parameters but on the numbers array I simply call pop and then close the brackets, passing in no parameters because it's going to remove the last element of the array. Let's go ahead and deploy this contract and firstly look at our numbers. We can see we have our original list. Now if we want to push a number like 300, we can call it and then if we call our array, we can see 300 is there. And if we want to remove it, we say pop from numbers and now it's gone. We can pop again and we can see our array is decreasing in size. Two more things we can do is check the length and delete an item by index. Here I've got a function that is get numbers length and it will return the length of this array by calling numbers.length. Then for the delete item by index function that we created, we specify the delete keyword, the numbers array and pass in the index that we want to remove. Now with this function it doesn't remove the element, meaning that the length doesn't decrease but it sets the value on that index to its default. Let's test this out. I'm going to go ahead and clear this and redeploy the contract. And now what I'm going to check first is the numbers length. So we can see the length is currently 4 because it has 4 elements. So what will happen if we now add a number like 200? Let's push this. And then if we check the length we can see it's 5. We can also get the entire array and see that 200 was indeed added. Now let's go ahead and delete from index. Let's say I want to delete the 7 over there. This would be in the 1 index. So I'm going to say delete index 1. And now when I get my numbers, I can see 7 just turned into 0. But the length is still the same. This is essentially what we can do with arrays. It's brilliant and you'll see me use it more in this course.